Assalamu alaikum. This is our lecture number 45 of managerial economics and this also is the last lecture of our 45 lecture series and the topic that we are going to discuss today is government in the market economy. Throughout this managerial economics course most of the time we have treated market as a place where consumers and firms come together to trade goods and services without the intervention of the government. But today our topic is that uh, role of government in the market economy. The reason is that there are certain rules and regulations which are enacted and enforced by the government and these rules and regulations they play a very important role in the decisions that are taken by the firms or the consumers. The role of the manager in this context is that he has to un he or she has to understand these rules and regulations and also he or she has to see what will be the impact or how these rules and regulation will affect the managerial decision making that is the optimal managerial decisions. Why uh, we, the question here is that why we consider the role of government in the market economy? The reason is market failure. Market failure occurs when uh, a market fails to achieve its economic efficiency. When we are referring to economic efficiency, we are referring to both the allocation efficiency and also the productive efficiency. So in this way, market fails to uh, maximize its social surplus. In today's lecture, basically, we'll be considering the sources of this market failure. That is, what are the causes of market failure? These include, there are various causes of market failure, but we are going to consider only five major causes of market failure. And these are, number one, market power. Number two, natural monopoly. Number three, externalities. Number four, public goods. And number five, incomplete information. Now, first of all, we have to consider market power. Obviously, market power, we are referring to the monopoly power. In case of when we were discussing monopoly, we have considered in detail what are the social costs of mono monopoly or the market power. Market power, um, a firm has a market power when its price exceeds the marginal cost of production. And uh, we have discussed it in detail what are, the so what are the social benefits or social cost of the monopoly to the society. In order to refresh you, uh, let's have a look on the screen. And here we can see that the social costs of monopoly, it includes two sources. One is that monopoly market creates a loss in social welfare due to the decline in mutually beneficial trade activity. And the second is there is also a wealth transfer problem that is associated with monopoly. Consumer surplus is transferred to producer surplus. And we have called this uh, a, a deadweight loss from monopoly. This can also be shown with the help of a diagram. Here in this figure, which we have explained in our monopoly lectures, you can see the deadweight loss which is caused by the monopoly. And this you can see the dark shaded area, that is the triangle, which is uh, showing here the loss um, to the society from the monopoly. This high degree of market power, there are three types of this market power. Number one is actual or attempted monopolization. Second is price fixing cartels. And third is uh, uh, mergers among the horizontal competitors. Now, as far as these uh, different degrees of monopoly power or market power is concerned, uh, for, in order to restrict the formation of these types of monopolies, there are certain laws which are enacted and enforced by the government. And these laws are called antitrust policy. Every country has its own antitrust policy. This is also called competition policy. For instance, in Pakistan, we have various regulatory authorities such as PAMRA, that is Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority, and similarly AGRA, which stands for Oil and Gas Regulatory Authority, and we also have Pakistan Competition Commission. If we visit the website of this uh, PCC, that is Pakistan Competition Commission, we'll notice there that there are various industries, important industries, unke baare mein jo information hai, wo aap wahan se ja ke dek sakte hain. Ki kis tarah se inke jo different policies hain, uh, unko uh, ye commission jo hai, wo control karta hai. For instance, uh, sugar industry, textile industry, automobiles, cement industry. As far as uh, these industries are concerned, they have their associations. And sometimes these associations, they 
پلے دا رول آف پرائز فکسنگ کارٹیلس یعنی کہ ان کا جو رول ہے مارکیٹ میں وہ پرائز فکسنگ کارٹیل کی طرح ہوتا ہے جس سے کہ وہ پرائز فکس کر لیتے ہیں اور اس سے کنسیومرس کو کافی جو ہے نقصان اٹھانا پڑتا ہے جیسے کہ شوگر انڈسٹری میں ہم دیکھ سکتے ہیں کہ ریزن جو ہے وہ صرف یہ نہیں ہے کہ پہلے کی نسبت شوگر کین کم کاشت کیا جا رہا ہے لیکن اس کی ریزن یہ بھی ہے کہ جو ایسوسی ایشن سیم پولیٹیکل ریزنس بھی ہیں لیکن شوگر انڈسٹری کی جو ایسوسی ایشن ہے وہ پرائز کو فکس کر دیتے ہیں جس طرح کہ بالکل ایک پرائز فکسنگ کارٹیل کی طرح سے تو ان سب چیزوں کو روکنے کے لیے پرائز یہاں پہ ہمارے پاس جو ہے پاکستان کمپٹیشن کمیشن ہے اور اسی طرح سے ریگولیٹری اتھارٹیز ہیں جو کہ دوسرے ملکوں میں بھی جب ہم دیکھتے ہیں تو ہر ملک کی اپنی اپنی ریگولیٹ رولز اور ریگولیشنس ہیں پولوشن کو روکنے کے لیے اور اسی طرح سے ان ساری جو ایکٹیویٹیز ہیں جو کہ کنزیومرس کے اگینسٹ چاہتی ہیں یا پروڈیوسرس کے اگینسٹ چاہتی ہیں ان کے لیے یہ رولز اینڈ ریگولیشنس جو ہیں وہ بنائے جاتے ہیں نیکسٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کنسیڈر این ادر سورس آف مارکیٹ فیلئر اینڈ دیٹ از نیچرل مونوپلی وی آلسو ہیو کنسیڈرڈ نیچرل مونوپلی وائل وی ور ڈسکسنگ مونوپلی اینڈ وی ہیو سین دیٹ دیر آر سرٹن نیچرل مونوپلیز فار انسٹنس دا ایگزامپل دیٹ وی ہیو گیون از دا پبلک یوٹیلیٹیز فار انسٹنس واٹر gas, electricity, telecommunication services and transport services. In all these things, as we have known, we have discussed that all these products and services, they require a huge amount of all these products and services, they require a huge amount of cost on infrastructure. And also, if there are, uh, one, if there are more than two uh, firms in the market, then there is a problem of duplication of supply lines. In order to avoid uh, this uh, unnecessary duplication of supply lines, government sometimes allow the existence of a natural monopoly. Or is zyada tar ye natural monopolies jo hain, jaise maine pehle kaha, public utilities hain, jo ke public utilities mein electricity ki provision hai, water hai, gas hai, aur isi tarah se services mein telecommunications or transportation. تو ان کی جو لائنس ہیں سپلائی لائنس ان کی ڈپلیکیشن کو اوائڈ کرنے کے لیے اور اس کے علاوہ ان پہ کیونکہ بہت زیادہ کاسٹ آتی ہے انفراسٹرکچر کے اوپر جو کہ پرائیویٹ سیکٹر جو کہ اسمال فارمس جو ہیں وہ افورڈ نہیں کر سکتی تو اس کے لیے گورنمنٹ جو ہے وہ اس میں ایک فارم جو وچ از اے لارج فارم اینڈ اٹ از آلسو کاسٹ ایفیشینٹ فارم اٹ از الاؤڈ ٹو ورک ایز اے مونوپلی ٹو ایگزٹ ایز اے مونوپلی بٹ ان ریٹرن دا گورنمنٹ ریگولیٹس اٹس پرائسز اینڈ اٹس quality, the service or the product that it is providing to the society. So, this single large firm, which is the product or the service, provides all the region. And the reason, as I have told you, the reason is that is the, uh, the scale economies. Scale economies, because these firms they are cost efficient and the cost per unit is uh, reduced in this case. Now, as far as this, these natural monopolies are concerned, uh, we can consider, uh, we can illustrate how these natural monopolies can cause a market failure. In order to illustrate this, let's, uh, uh, let's have a look at the diagram, which you can see on your screen. As I said earlier, that the reason of the existence of these public utility monopolies is that they have scale economies. Since they have scale economies, their uh, long-run cost curves and their, uh, their long-run marginal cost curves and their long-run average cost curves, they are declining. As you can see on your screen, in this case, uh, this is an example of a natural monopoly, and this natural monopoly is facing, uh, this monopolist is facing the demand curve, D, and marginal revenue curve, which is uh, labeled as MR, marginal revenue. Its long-run average cost is falling, it's, uh, and its long-run marginal cost is also falling. Long-run marginal cost lying, it is lying below the long-run average cost. If this uh, natural monopoly is unregulated, in that case, the best level of output is uh, where the marginal revenue curve intersects the long-run marginal cost curve, uh, which is indicated by point E. At this point, the output of this natural monopolist is 3 million units, and the price is, which you can see on an uh, on-demand curve, point A, and the price is $6 per unit, whereas the average cost per unit is $5. So this means that the firm is uh, earning 
uh, huge profits that is super normal profit it is earning a profit of one dollar per unit but in this case you can see if this natural monopoly is left unregulated so it will be producing only three million units of uh, the service or the product and at the price of six dollars per unit here we can see that uh, we, get, we might notice here that price is greater than marginal cost. This means that from this uh, social point of view, more output is required. And the regulatory, here comes the role of the regulatory authority of the government. And the regulatory authority in this case will determine the price at a level where price is equal to the long run average cost curve which you can see on the diagram. This is given by the point G in our diagram, where the long run average cost curve is intersecting um, the demand curve. And this is the point where the level of output will be 6 million units. That is exactly the double of uh, the unit, the double of the units. Previously, the firm was, as a natural monopolist, the firm was producing 3 million units. But now, as it is regulated by the regulatory authority or committee, it will be producing 6 million units at the cost of, now the price is um, $3 per unit. Previously, the price was $6 per unit. So you can see the difference here. But if you look at the diagram, we can see that still uh, from the social uh, ideal position of the socially desirable output, that is when the long run marginal cost curve uh, intersect the demand curve here we can see the point here is that is the price which is equal to the marginal cost of production and that is the point h in the diagram and here the output will be 8 million units at the uh, and the price is only one dollar per unit but in this case the long run average cost at this point is two dollars per unit so obviously uh, when the firm is producing its price is one dollar and its cost is two dollars. So in this case, the public uh, this public utility will simply stop its uh, production, or is me zahire ki usko nuksan ho raha hai, because the firm is incurring a loss of one dollar per unit. So the firm in this case uh, will continue to provide the service to the society only if it is provided a one dollar subsidy per unit. Usually. The regulatory authorities or commission, they determine a price which is equal to where the price is equal to long run average cost curve, that is, uh, which we have here presented by point G, that is in that case, this natural monopoly will be producing 6 million units at the price of $3 per unit. Now we have seen uh, that uh, as far as the price determination or the level of output is concerned, from this diagram it seems to be simple and uh, fairly straightforward. But in reality it is not that simple. The reason there are various reasons for it. One is uh, that these types of natural monopolies, they are uh, usually they are providing more than one service or product. In that case it becomes very difficult to isolate the to isolate the cost of uh, services, different services, and or to isolate the cost of different products which this uh, monopoly is producing. The other reason is that this natural monopolist, it is uh, providing this uh, service or uh, products to the various uh, classes of the society. And these different classes of the society, they have different uh, price elasticities of demand, and therefore, the regulatory authority has to be careful that they have to determine the prices or the rates of the, these services according to the uh, according to the elasticities of demand of the various uh, uh, groups. Jaisa ki hum dekh sakte hain ki agar hum if we look at our monthly bills of gas or electricity, we will notice that there uh, there are different rates for different uh, units consumed. For instance, in case of electricity. For the first 100 units, the rate is different, it is lower, and for the successive next uh, 100 units or 200 units, the rates become higher progressively. So this is how uh, we can see that as far as price determination of, uh, in case of a natural monopoly is concerned for the service or the product, it is not that simple. Or isi wajah se, hum keh sakte hain ki market failure jo hai, it can become a cause of market failure. 
because the demand and supply or which is required or the intersection of the demand and supply sometimes it is not possible and as a result uh, to determine one single efficient price it becomes uh, quite difficult. Next we will be considering another source of uh, market failure which is externality and perhaps this is one of the most serious uh, cause of market failure that is externality. There are basically two types of externalities. One is positive externality and the second is negative externality. If we are considering an economic activity among the producers and uh, the consumers and as a result of this economic activity, a third party has to uh, pay the, uh, the cost that is for instance it is, it is harmful for the well-being of this third party and the third party is not paid for uh, this uh, resulting damage. That is then we say that a negative externality exists. On the other hand, uh, if uh, among the consumers and producers there is an economic activity and as a result of this economic activity one party or third party helps, it uh, helps the well-being of the third party and the third party is not paying for this benefit which it is um, receiving, uh, this is called, then we say that this is a creation of positive externality. As far as negative externality and positive externality are concerned, for the negative externality, the most important and the relevant example is pollution. That is the noise pollution, air pollution or water pollution. And for the positive externality, the example or the most relevant source is education or training or um, research and development activities. In order to explain these uh, two types of externalities, uh, let's have a look at uh, the diagrams that we have here provided on uh, screen. Uh, in the absence of uh, externalities, we can see here on screen, you, you'll see that uh, the supply curve is uh, given and the demand curve is given and this supply and demand curve is intersecting at uh, a point where the uh, output is uh, QCM where CM stands for competitive market and the price which is determined uh, um, by the intersection of the demand and supply curve that price is labeled as PCM that is price in the competitive market. As far as competitive market is concerned as compared to monopoly obviously competitive market is um, it is a socially efficient market but there are uh, due to externalities and certain other uh, causes a uh, perfectly competitive market can also become uh, a, a reason of market failure. For instance, in this case, we can see in the absence of externalities, uh, demand curve, it is considered to be value to the consumers and the supply curve is considered to be cost to the sellers. Due to pollution, when uh, the firms are producing uh, various types of products, for instance, uh, steel, paper, textiles or any other product for that matter, they are also producing pollution as a byproduct. So we can see that as a result of this, the cost of uh, the cost will be increased, which is shown as the shift as we can see here that the social cost, which is the supply curve is labeled as private cost or it is when we add the pollution cost, it is labeled as social cost. And this social cost curve it uh, intersects the demand curve at point where the level of output is Q is steric, which is lower than QCM, that is the level of output which was being produced in a competitive market. On the other hand, price is P is steric now, which is greater than uh, PCM, which, were, uh, which was the price in the competitive market. So this shows the problem of overproduction. When the firm is not considering the cost of pollution, it is not internalizing this, this cost of uh, pollution, uh, then uh, it, it, there is a problem of overproduction. Because the firm is cost to consider it, so this is overproduction because the firm is cost to include it. It is not including in its uh, in the cost of production. Therefore, they are overproducing at a lower price. Now have a look at the other diagram where we are showing the effect of positive externality. In this case you can see as I said earlier that the demand 
curve presents value to the buyers. As a result of education, more education, more training or research and development, demand curve will shift upwards and we call this demand curve in this context as a value curve or a benefit curve. So benefit curve, when it shifts upwards, as a result, now the production here, the amount of education which is required, which is socially required by the society, this can be seen as uh, here QCM and Q hysteric. So the um, uh, comparative market, thi, usme aapke jo amount of education, your research or training, thi, that is shown by the QCM and socially desirable amount of education, this is shown by Q hysteric and the price is P hysteric. So in this case, there is inverse problem here. This is showing a problem of underproduction. Just make a clearly the what will be the impact of this positive externality. But basically here as a source of market failure, we will be considering negative externalities. That is, we will concentrate on negative externalities. And the main form of the negative externality is pollution. For instance, paper making require poisonous solutions and uh, chlorine compounds for uh, to bleach the paper products and similarly textile production uh, usually it causes uh, it produces a chemical which is a cancer causing um, cancer causing a chemical which is known as dioxin and uh, if now the ma textile manufacturer decides to dump its uh, waste product into a nearby river this will pollute the river water and as the production of textile increases, the pollution in the water will also increase. As a result, the uh, oxygen content in the water will be reduced uh, and uh, this will impact the, negatively the, society, the uh, community which is living nearby and also fish, birds and other uh, water animals of the river. So this is the cost which is borne by the members of the society, although the firm is producing this uh, pollution, but it's not paying for its pollution because it is dumping this waste for free into the river. Let's consider another example uh, for this uh, in order to explain the negative, the impact of the negative in, uh, externality, how, it, uh, how the society has to bear the cost. In the, for this purpose, we have drawn another diagram here and we are considering the production of steel industry. As you can see on your screen that we have drawn here a diagram where the demand for steel industry is given as D, uh, which is also called in this context marginal benefit curve. And uh, we have also shown here, you can see the cost curve. The, basically. The cost curve is shown as the supply curve. As I said earlier that uh, in this context, the supply curve is reflecting cost to the firm. Since we are considering here a perfectly a competitive industry where it has various firms and the uh, price is determined by the intersection of demand and supply curves. So, you can see on the screen that here we have the intersection that is the point where the two curves intersect. Move curve jo hai, supply curve hai, or jo demand curve hai, wo intersect kar rahe hai, where the output level is q indicated by Q1 and the price which is uh, at which steel is produced and uh, it is marketed that is that price is P1. यहाँ पे हम देख सकते हैं कि अगर हम फिर वही एग्जांपल लें कि पास सी इनके नियर बाय देयर इज अ रिवर एंड दिस फॉर्म द फॉर्म्स आर डंपिंग देयर वेस्ट इनटू द रिवर एज अ रिजल्ट द रिवर वाटर बिकम्स पोल्यूटेड एंड द सोसाइटी हैज टू बेयर द कॉस्ट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ डर्टी वाटर बट द फॉर्म इज नॉट पेइंग फॉर इट द फॉर्म इज डंपिंग इट्स वेस्ट फॉर फ्री इनटू द रिवर and this is shown by this cost we, uh, to the society is shown by the curve which is labeled as MCE that is marginal cost, external marginal cost or MCP is for the private marginal cost which is the cost of the firm that is the cost of which is showing or reflecting the cost of production of the firms. And uh, this cost of production, which is which we have labeled as uh, internal cost of production, or we can call it private uh, uh, private marginal cost. So, here the inke intersection hai because the firm is ignoring the fact that it is polluting the water. In that case, uh, the level of output is in the uh, in the competitive market. The level of output is shown by the mm, point Q1. 
but if the firm takes into consideration this cost that is the cost of pollution in that case we, uh, the firm has to take the vertical summation of these two types of costs that is the cost curve which is presented by MCE and MCP that is the private uh, marginal cost and the where the private marginal cost is the sum of the marginal cost of all the firms in the industry that is the steel industry. Ab agar inko add kare, that is we have to add these two curves vertically and the vertical summation or as a result of vertical summation of these two types of costs that is the private cost and the um, external cost or the internal cost plus the external cost. The resulting curve is shown as MCS that is uh, marginal cost of uh, marginal cost which is the marginal social cost. So this is here we can see that now the socially desirable output of steel is is not Q1, it is Q2 that is lower than the perfectly competitive uh, level of output and here also we can see that price is greater than that is P2 is greater than P1. This in other words means that as we have earlier mentioned that uh, when the uh, firm ignores the cost of pollution, uh, it is uh, creating also the problem of overproduction of steel in this case. So in order to see that how this overproduction problem is created, we have here a numerical example. Suppose that external marginal cost of producing steel is given as MCE is equal to 3Q and the private marginal cost is that is the cost of production is MCP which is equal to 6Q. The inverse demand function uh, which is faced by this industry, steel industry, it is given by P equal to 100 minus Q. Socially efficient level of output that is MC social, this is equal to external marginal cost plus private marginal cost. And here we get 3Q plus 6Q which is equal to 9Q. And now we have seen here that in order to find the efficient level of steel production, we equate it to the demand function. That is the cost function and the demand function are equated and we solve it for Q and we get here Q equal to 10. On the other hand, if this uh, external cost is ignored, that is the cost of pollution uh, which the firm is creating as a byproduct of its production, if it is, uh, it, it is not uh, included and it is ignored, in that case, uh, the perfectly competitive market will produce here, as you can see on your screen, that now we equate the private marginal cost, that is the cost of production, 6Q equal to 100 minus Q, and we get Q equal to 14.3. So here you can see that the problem of overproduction when the cost of pollution is ignored the uh, Q is equal to 14.3 units of steel whereas when this cost is internalized that is the firm takes into consideration this uh, cost of pollution in that case the uh, level of output is only 10 units. Here we have seen that how the negative externalities can be a source of market failure. The question here is that what are the solutions? There are various solutions. First of all, according to the Coase theorem, it is uh, required that uh, the property rights should be uh, well defined by the government. That is, uh, in this case, we have seen that the steel industry is uh, saying uh, and it thinks that it is their right to dump their waste into the nearby river. Whereas the environmentalists, they, uh, they think that it is their right to have a clean water a clean river water. In this case, the government should come forward and it should well define the property rights. Or is silsile mein zahir hai ki government jo hai, wo ye kahegi ki environment ke upar government ka apna is mein jo hai, government is the uh, owner. So in that case, government has to take the action, either in the form of uh, uh, command and uh, control regulation, that is the government can uh, give a command and control regulation to the firm, that is it has to internalize the cost, it has to pay for the cost of pollution. And the second uh, thing is that the government can impose taxes and these taxes are called Pigovian taxes after the name of the economist Arthur Pigo who suggested and advocated these types of taxes. In order to explain, uh, here as we can see uh, that uh, as far as these taxes are concerned, in order to impose these taxes, the taxes have to be precisely estimated. Uh, so that uh, the cost, that is the cost of pollution, uh, is uh, to be, it, it, is, it should be equal to the cost of pollution. That is the tax which is being imposed, it, is, it should be equal to the uh, 
uh, amount of the pollution which has been created by the firm. Uh, you can see on screen here, uh, if the government uh, decides to impose a tax, that is if there are external costs in the production of uh, product X, then social marginal costs are represented by the curve MCS and MC prime. And here you can see that the demand curve uh, of the product F and the supply curve, which is labeled as MC. But as a result of uh, uh, pollution, uh, the cost of pollution, this uh, supply curve, it shifts upwards uh, due to the vertical summation that uh, we have just uh, considered. Now the new cost curve will be, which is including both the internal cost and the external cost, that is MC prime. In the next slide, we can see here that uh, the tax, the amount of tax that is to be imposed by the government, that is exactly, as you can see on screen, that is exactly equal to the external cost. That is a tax, it is equal to these additional marginal cost. It will reduce the output to the socially optimal level, which is X2. In this case, previously it was X1, and now it is X2. So the price paid for the good is P2 now reflects all the costs. When the firm which is uh, creating pollution, it has to internalize this cost of uh, pollution. In that case, obviously, the firm's output now will be uh, lower than before and its price will be larger. Uh, as I mentioned Coase theorem earlier, according to the Coase theorem, as you can see on screen, according to Coase theorem, government need not be involved in every case of externality. Private bargains and negotiations are likely to lead to an efficient solution in many social damage cases without any government involvement at all. This argument is referred to as the Coase theorem and according to Coase theorem, uh, it is possible to resolve these uh, problems without the intervention of the government only if the bargaining uh, cost or the um, if the bargaining cost is not substantially high but if it is substantially high and also there are many parties which are involved the government has to come into the picture next we will consider another source of uh, market failure and that is called public good a public good is uh, uh, it is a good which has a distinguishing properties and these properties are that in its consumption this is a non-rival consumption and also it is non-exclusionary. Now what is meant by these terms non-rival consumption or non-excludable consumption? We can see these uh, the formal definition of these terms on screen by non-rival consumption what is meant is that it is a good which when consumed by one person does not preclude other people from also consuming the good. We can give various examples for it, for instance, uh, radio signals, national defense, highways, airports, fire protection, police, traffic signals, street lights, etc. And what is meant by the non-exclusionary good or non-excludable type of consumption? You can see it on screen that non-exclusionary term is explained as that no one is excluded from consuming the good once it is provided. Here again, there are various examples, for instance, clean air, once if, there, if the air is clean, you cannot exclude anyone uh, or you cannot allocate it to a single person. So once these uh, public goods are provided, people cannot be excluded from uh, consuming it. Public good, as I said before, that it has two properties that in consumption it is non-rivalous and it is also non-excludable. For instance, if you buy a TV set market, that is an example of rival consumption because if you have purchased a TV set, you have precluded others from consuming it. Now, you can buy it and you can use the TV set to use it to use it to use it. But as far as the thing is that if you are watching a television program or you are watching a news channel or you are watching a favorite program, the, uh, you cannot preclude other people from watching the same program. That is, they are watching the same program uh, in the same uh, uh, point of time. So, in this way, the difference hai, that is rival consumption and non-rival consumption. As far as the private goods are concerned, there we, uh, we can give uh, the example that it is an example of rival consumption. Jaisi maine abhi kaha, 
कि अगर आपने एक टीवी सेट लिया है तो दूसरों आपने उसका जो इस्तेमाल है वो दूसरों के लिए नहीं रहा तो वो एग्जांपल है राइवल कंसम्पशन की लेकिन अगर आप उस पर प्रोग्राम देख रहे हैं तो वो प्रोग्राम अगर आपने इफ़ यू हैव पेड फॉर दैट प्रोग्राम देन ऑब्वियसली यू कैन सी यू कैन वॉच दैट प्रोग्राम एंड देर आर वेरियस अदर कंज्यूमर्स और प्रेस्क्राइबर्स हु आर वॉचिंग द सेम प्रोग्राम द सेम टाइम so in that case that is an example of non rival consumption of a good or service now coming to the non excludable uh, once this uh, public good is provided uh, say airports hain ya highways hain fire protection hai and uh, the most important example is the national de- uh, national defense uh, when this national defense uh, it is it is there to protect each and every citizen of the country hum ye nahi keh sakte ke ye tax paying log hain ye inko ye national defense jo hai wo hum provide karenge whereas all those who are non paying non tax paying citizen they will not be provided uh, this service this is not possible that is they cannot be excluded from it to is is tarah se hum bahut si examples iske liye de sakte hain रोड्स हैं रोड्स जो हैं वो सब यूज़ कर रहे होते हैं इसी तरह से अगर आप अपनी गाड़ी में एफएम रेडियो लगा रहे हैं तो बहुत से लोग उसी टाइम पे एफएम रेडियो को यूज़ कर रहे हैं वो नॉन राइबल हो जाता है और उसमें एक्सक्लूडेबल की बात जहाँ तक आती है जैसे मैंने पहले कहा कि जैसे केबल प्रोवाइडर हैं तो वो अगर आप एक टी प्रोग्राम अगर आपने एक पैकेज जो है यू हैव पेड फॉर दैट पैकेज देन यू कैन व्यू दैट दोज प्रोग्राम्स बट दे कैन एक्सक्लूड यू from a view from the viewership uh, from the viewership if you have not paid for it so in that case it is possible uh, to exclude some people lekin uh, normally jo uh, public goods hain wo non rival or non excludable hoti hain kyunki jab ek dafa jaise street light hai ya traffic signals hain when they are provided uh, everyone use them now as far as the problem that how these public goods becomes a source of market failure this is due to two problems due to two reasons and one is the free rider problem and the other is hidden preference problem in case of public goods there is a tendency among the public that they do not want to pay for it because they think that it is being provided freely so isliye jab isko pay karne ki baat aati hai tax ki form mein hum pay kar rahe hote hain lekin jab agar hame specifically kaha jaye ki aap ki street light agar kharab ho gayi to aap uske liye khud kabhi pay nahi karenge so that is how example agar hum lete hain ki street light aapki kharab ho gayi hai to usme agar do log hain aur wo usko pull karke pay karna chahe to maybe one of them will say that no i don't need it so they do not one thing is that aur agar inme se let's say there are two consumers a and b और अगर ए जो है वो उसको इंस्टॉल करवा लेता है इन दैट केस बी विल आल्सो बी एंजॉइंग द फैसिलिटी एंड ही विल बी अ फ्री राइडर इन दैट केस तो ये एक फ्री राइडर का प्रॉब्लम है सो ऑब्वियसली प्राइवेट सेक्टर जो है वो आपको फ्री लंचेस प्रोवाइड नहीं करता तो इसलिए प्राइवेट सेक्टर जो है वो पब्लिक गुड्स में नॉर्मली वो पब्लिक गुड्स को प्रोवाइड नहीं करता वन रीजन इज दैट अज कॉस्ट इज इन्वॉल्व एंड द अदर रीजन इज दिस फ्री राइडर प्रॉब्लम well the next reason is the hidden preference uh, agar hum uh, jaise maine abhi street lights ki baat ki hai to street light ke liye kabhi bhi consumer a ya b jo hai they will not reflect their true value of the street light uh, this is what is called hidden preferences that is they do not reveal their true preferences for the public good in the form of uh, in the case of a private good they reveal their preferences Uh, in the form of the price they are willing to pay for it so the producers know what to produce and how to produce and how much to produce uh, because price in that case is uh, guiding them uh, or it is giving them a credible signal but in case of public goods there is no such signal which is available because uh, people have a tendency to free ride and they have a tendency to uh, not to reveal their Uh, preferences true preferences so their preferences are hidden in this case in order to illustrate how um, this uh, public good problem how public good can cause market failure problem let's see uh, an example on the screen here we are considering a problem suppose there are only two people in the market that is uh, consumers a and consumer b 
and their individual demand curves or marginal benefit curves for consumption of the public good are DA and DB. If we vertically sum these uh, DA and DB, we get the social marginal benefit curve that is MSB for Y or society's demand curve DT for the public good. So that MSB that is the marginal social benefit of public good Y is exactly equal to the marginal social cost of public good Y. As you can see on the screen, the demand curve for consumer A is presented as DA and the demand curve for consumer B is presented as DB. And the vertical summation of the uh, demand curve, we get the aggregate demand curve, which is presented as DT, that is the total demand. And uh, the supply curve of this public good Y is presented by the curve SY. Now, given this uh, supply curve, the intersection of the supply curve and the demand curve is at point T. So the public good, the amount of public good produced is equal to Q by, and we have seen that we have obtained this uh, aggregate demand by taking the vertical summation of DA and DB. This is in contrast to the perfectly competitive market situation where we have obtained the aggregate demand curve of different consumers by taking a horizontal summation. But here we have taken a vertical summation. Now we have seen here that a public good can be a source of uh, or cause of market failure as we have considered that there are two, basically there are two properties of the public good. And those are that uh, in this case, in the case of public goods, people do not reveal their true preferences. That is the uh, hi that is the uh, hidden uh, preferences problem and the other problem is that they have a tendency to use the public good free. That is they are not willing to provide uh, to pay for the public good and that is uh, that is what is called free rider problem. So in uh, due to these two problems private sector will not come forward to produce a public good and that is why um, and uh, that is why here, here we have a, this becomes a source of market failure and a sub -op -op optimal amount of a public good is uh, produced in the market. Next important source of market failure is incomplete information. As we have seen that we have uh, considered here that uh, um, the market sources of market failure, we are going to consider here the important five uh, um, types. That is one is the market part, uh, second is uh, natural monopoly, third externalities, fourth public goods, and fifth and the last one here is incomplete information. If the market has to function efficiently, then all the participants of the market, that is consumers and producers, they, ha they must have complete information about the things such as prices, quality, and the source of, uh, for instance, we, if we are considering, if we are medicines, ko consider kar rahe hai, then uh, it should be given what, are, what could be the uh, possible side effects of the medicine, and all these information should be provided. Incomplete information, it can take another form when the information is asymmetric. That is, one group of society has more information as compared to the other groups. For instance, we have considered, we have considered this problem of asymmetric information while we were discussing risk analysis. And there we have seen that how this asymmetric information results into uh, adverse selection. और उसमें हमने आपको एग्जांपल दी थी यूज्ड कार की जिसमें के हमने कहा था कि जो इनफॉरमेशन है एस फॉर एस दिस यूज्ड कार्स आर कंसर्न द इनफॉरमेशन अबाउट दिस यूज्ड कार एस फॉर एस द सप्लायर इस कंसर्न उसकी जो इनफॉरमेशन है दैट इस मच मोर देन द इनफॉरमेशन द पोटेंशियल बायर हैव अबाउट दिस and similarly, the government, as far as the role of government in this case is concerned, the government should provide rules and regulations. Um, where um, and using these rules and regulations, आपने देखा होगा कि different जो um, food items हैं जो के tin में uh, available हैं. Uh, even in Pakistan, uh, there the ingredients are mentioned, and uh, also if we consider medicines. The ingredients are there, the information about the ingredients is given, and also the possible side effects of the drugs are also given. Similarly, people should also know about the uh, various uh, uh, hazardous health problems create kar sakte hain, jahan pe jaise wo factories mein kaam kar rahe hain, or different factories jis mein ke chemicals uh, vagaira jo hain, uski uh, uh, pollution hai, ye sab information jo hai, that should be given to the public. For instance, smoking, 
का जैसे हम देखते हैं तो पब्लिक अवेयरनेस अगर होगी तो स्मोकिंग जो है वो कम होगी क्योंकि स्मोकिंग हेल्थ इट इज बैड फॉर द हेल्थ एंड इफ इट इफ इट इज पब्लिक इज मेड अवेयर ऑफ दिस देन मे बी दे विल द पोटेंशियल स्मोकर्स दे माइट नॉट स्मोक Uh, and also you might have noticed that on each pack of cigarettes even in pakistan a warning signal is given this is how the information can be given regarding various uh, products and services so jahan pe humne jo abhi tak humne dekha hai ki jo market failure ki reasons thi basic reasons jaise ki maine abhi bataya ki humne jo basic reasons thi wo consider ki hain इसमें हमने देखा सबसे पहले मार्केट पार नेचुरल मोनोपलीज एंड एक्सटर्नैलिटीज पब्लिक गुड्स एंड ऑल्सो द रोल ऑफ इनकम्प्लीट इंफॉर्मेशन नाउ वी हैव सीन दैट हाउ गवर्नमेंट कैन रिजॉल्व और हाउ गवर्नमेंट कैन इम्प्रूव द सिचुएशन बाय एलिवेटिंग दीज प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ पब्लिक गुड्स एक्सटर्नैलिटीज नेचुरल मोनोपली एंड पार मार्केट पार and also the incomplete information but as far as the solution of this problem is concerned uh, we will notice that uh, the government itself jab government jo hai wo in sare problems ko solve karne ki koshish karti hai to isme uh, jo hai ek problem aati hai ki uh, government agar ek group ke liye usko improve karne ke liye uski problem jaise ki solution uh, pollution ke mamle mein humne baat ki hai to wo it is always at the expense of the other group so as far as the government itself is concerned uh, in order to solve the problem of one group it is always at the expense of the other group and for this purpose all over the world uh, we can see that various strong lobbies have been developed and these strong lobbies they uh, pay the corrupt government officials or corrupt politicians for that matter in order to and this is how they influence the public policy jo bhi policy antitrust policy ki humne baat ki aur isi tarah se competition policies hain aur ye sari policies jo hain inke laws banaye jate hain aur inke jo policies hain inko legislation inki baqayda hoti hai to is tarah se ye jo strong lobbies hain ye influence they can Uh, pay huge amounts to influence the government policy so uh, this this is a process which is called rent seeking this rent seeking is an uh, important problem as far as the uh, solution to the market economy uh, in the form of uh, the government solution is concerned agar government ki jo actions hain usme ye rent seeking policy jo hai iska ek role hai and in order to avoid this the famous economist gary becker he has uh, given the suggestion that people should vote out such uh, corrupt politicians or corrupt corrupt uh, because they can vote out the corrupt politicians or jo government officials hain ya business jo firms hain who are involved in this uh, these kinds of uh, activities they should be punished and there should be strict laws for it in this way only this uh, corruption which is created or this rent seeking this can be discouraged uh, only by using strict measures on the part of the government and obviously public can also play a part by voting out corrupt politicians so here we can conclude our problem that uh, as far as market power externalities public goods and incomplete information create a potential role for government in the marketplace government's presence create uh, rent seeking incentives which may undermine its ability to improve matters and results in the government's failure so this results in government's failure so here we can see that in order to resolve the problem of market failure which is caused by the externalities public goods market power and in incomplete information government comes into uh, to play the role and uh, in order to uh, elevate and in this way it can alleviate these problems but the thing is that we have seen here that as a result this also results into the rent seeking problem so this might cause the government failure too with that we come to an end of this session and this is also the end of this uh, course of managerial economics thank you khuda hafiz